Welcome to ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Keisha King. In our show this time, we'll review the most recent top five ThinkTech talk shows and staff picks. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. ThinkTech produces more than 35 talk shows every week in our downtown high-tech green screen studio. Our Think Tech talk show offerings are very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, covering things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before, based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this week, the winning shows are as follows. Number one, Beyond the Lines, hosted by Rusty Komori. It was called USDA High Performance Coach Brent Hunter, Beyond Tennis, with guest Brent Hunter. Rusty spoke with Brent about developing the full potential of athletes and creating a culture of excellence. Brent shared valuable insights about looking forward to challenges, being resilient, and the importance of a person's mindset. You've coached many, many students, hundreds of students, and you've taken a bunch of beginners and turn them into number one ranked players in the state. How did you do that and what did you focus on with them? Well, I think development in the beginning, if you know what it is you're doing, I think can be great because you're working with a clean slate. Uh, you can build fundamentals the way that they should be. Yeah. Um, and look at the big picture, the big overall picture of where that player wants to be and then map it out. Yeah. Why, why is tennis such a great sport in your eyes? Oh, for a bunch of reasons, but I think that it's a great exercise. Yep. Um, I like the individual aspect. You know, even though there is a team aspect to it, I think it's unique to find a sport where you're on your own, um, having to problem solve and find ways to battle adversity. And, and you got to hit it in. You got to hit the ball in. <laughs> Cannot hit it out and win. <laughs> we, would t we would talk about that to our players all the time. <laughs> Just hit it in one more time, right? Yep. Now, when you um, were coaching the Punahou JV and varsity team, what would you focus on in terms of team? Because tennis, like you said, is such an individual sport, and it's so special when players can come on a team like that. But what, were your, what, were, what was your focus with the team? Well, I think when you're on a team, I think that's a great opportunity to build leadership qualities uh, within the team for everyone. And I also think that it's important that everyone, regardless of what position they're playing, feels equally important because a win is a win. Yeah. And you're only as good as what your, your weakest player is. What are your thoughts, Brent, about the physical part of tennis versus the mental part versus the emotional part? I think they're all important. I think you have to have balance in the, the mental and emotional part is extremely important. The physical part, I think, is constantly changing and growing. And, and as tennis is evolving, so are the athletes that are playing. Number two from the series Ukulele Songs of Hawaii, hosted by Walter Kava'iea. It was called Bobby Hall Nahoku o Kalai Pohaku. Don't miss this fundraiser concert, Nahoku o Kalai Pohaku, with guest Bobby Hall. The Nahoku o Kalai Pohaku concert was July 27, 2019. Walter and Bobby spoke about community support for an iconic academic institution. Nahoko Kalai Pohaku uh, was basically a creation with St. Louis Alumni Board and uh, school president Glenn Medeiros. Um, it was talked about for years, but it was it never nothing really materialized until um, you know I had the opportunity to you know share you know my past talents you know with the school and with Glenn Medeiros at the helm you know it it made the you know the the venture even much easier from an entertainer's perspective. So last year's event was the first time. Um, typical, you know, <laughs> try to get St. Louis um, entertainers back to perform. Yeah. They showed up, you know, uh, strong, uh, represented the school. And um, for me, it was such a unique event. Uh, yeah. Possibly something that couldn't be duplicated only because it was the brotherhood yeah. playing for the brotherhood yeah. With the brotherhood, I get that. you know, 
all red and blue throughout. Yeah. And what was most unique to me was the caliber of the entertainment. Very versatile, mm -hmm. um, very you know, well-renowned in Hawaii. And everybody just basically made up their show sets backstage. Yeah, that's true. That's I mean, true. I was backstage, so I know what you're talking about. I mean, it was it was awesome, you know, just to see guys. And most of the time, we were just, you know, catching up on reminiscing. stories, reminiscing. What's all you gonna play? Oh, what about this one? You know, and then boom, 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 boom. Oh, you're on in ten minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I I think that transcended into the audience, you know, for a night that probably yeah, might be too evening. hard to yeah. So tell us, um, you know, these these. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't your intention when you created this venue it was simply to have a night to showcase the entertainers that are in the field that graduated from St. Louis. I mean, it went far beyond that. It was, it was, the intention was to raise funds for... Well, like all private school institutions, you know, um, many of them have to fundraise mm -hmm. to help uh, supplement the uh, operational costs, the uh, tuition costs. There's right. a balance on you know, what they can charge as far as tuition, and a lot of the cost get, gets picked up through donation, alumni support, what have you. And uh, St. Louis has always you know, uh, been a school that you know, benefited from donations and fundraisers and things like that. So this was intended to be you know, a fundraiser for the school. And at that time, uh, last year, mm -hmm. the primary needs of the school was to support uh, their STEM program, and particularly the robotics program. Okay. which was taken off yeah, and yeah. Uh, literally taken off and you know going international and being you yes. know renowned and uh, with some expense of course so the first time first try uh, they were the beneficiaries of last year's nahoku nice going forward uh, there's a commitment you know from the school uh, to have uh, nahoku support um, arts and, and music and arts music. number 3 from the series trump week hosted by me, Jay Fidel. It was called The Week of Jeffrey Epstein and the Sex Trafficking Scandal. How close is Epstein to Trump? With co-host Tim Apicella. We discussed the sex trafficking scandal involving Jeffrey Epstein, Trump's spat with the UK and the decline of our relationship with the UK, the UN human rights issues at the border, continuation of Trump's double down on the census question, Xi Jinping's new courtship with Abe in Japan and why, new lies from a new press secretary, Trump's strange increase in popularity in the face of all that, and much more. Well, let's go through some of the other issues. I mean, a high point this week was the whole thing about uh, Jeffrey uh, Epstein, yeah. uh, the multimillionaire, billionaire, if you will, who was um, currying favor with uh, Clinton and also with Trump, uh, who most recently distanced himself. Um, after uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, got in trouble with, uh, was it sex trafficking of, of minors? Yeah, um, that's pretty gross, and he's been pretty close to government. Yeah, um, and you know what effect is that going to have on? Trump? Well, you can distance if you want, but um, and Bill Clinton is not out of this either. No, I mean you watch Fox; they're saying Bill Clinton, you know, went to the island with Epstein. 27 times. Now, I don't know where that number comes from, but, you know, they're, the Republicans say, hey, it's Bill Clinton. The Democrats are saying, hey, I think it's Trump. And Trump doesn't help himself when he has quotations like this out there in the, in the marketplace. I think this was with, um, back in 2005, remember uh, Donald Trump was the owner of the Miss Teenage USA pageant. Mm -hmm. And when you have quotes like this that come back up in, in lieu of these kind of environments of Epstein and, and child molestation, uh, it doesn't help to have these kind of quotes, and that is, I'll go backstage, everyone's getting dressed, and I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant. They're standing there with no clothes, and you see these incredible looking women. I sort of get away with that kind of stuff. 2005. And some of those, those, those girls, those children, were 14 years old. Yeah. So as much as he would like to moonwalk away from his association with Epstein, we have quotations like this that won't quite allow him to do that. And then he made, he made a, a comment that's been quoted many times about how Epstein um, you know, liked beautiful women, especially the young ones. Yes. And he admired Epstein for that. So, um, What know, degree did he have knowledge of this going on? Yeah, well, there's more that we don't know about. Yeah, we don't.
Number four, from the series Community Matters, hosted by Jay Fidel, it was called The Politics of the Millennials, what young people think about the state of the presidency and of American politics with guest Doration. Doration is a millennial and has many thoughts about the presidency and American politics. She shared these thoughts with us and told us what she intends to do about it. Like it or not, the millennial generation will have to take action to straighten things out in this country. We need a 10, 20, 30 percent of our leadership to be standing up for people um, and not compromising on our values. And then that will lead to the critical policy changes and government and maybe campaign finance reform, specific changes in the way our government is run and financed um, that will then allow all the other changes to happen. And one of those things is, of course, getting money out of politics. And that would be a really basic level overturning Citizens mm. United. So something like that, like those key Green New Deal, those key things could be enough to shift, you know, the, the 10 major issues we're facing today. Oh, I, I'm glad. And I want to dwell with you on that. Let's, let's pick one that you mentioned, getting money out of politics. Yeah. I sure agree that money is, is corrupting politics, has been corrupting politics for your lifetime and maybe longer. Right. And a lot of that these days has to do with, um, you know, Citizens United, mm -hmm. right? Citizens United was a, was a case in the Supreme Court. Uh, there is no indication whatsoever that the Supreme Court is going to overturn that now yeah. or in the lifetimes of, you know, a majority of, of the court. Right. Uh, you know, we're not going to see a bunch of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's here. We're, we're going to see Republicans who are not inclined to turn over Citizens United. Mm -hmm. So. Assuming citizens are not last, how can you change that? I mean, what's the plan? If the, could there be a plan? And if so, what kind of a plan? What would it look like? You know, for July 4th, I read the Declaration of Independence. Did you really? Yeah, I was Good just like, you. let me just read this. And I've never done it before. I'm 27 years old. And in it, it says, if a government, something, you know, I'm summarizing. If a government fails to meet the needs, the basic needs of its people, and the basic desires of its people, and it strays from that in any way, then the people within the Declaration of Independence it states, the people must overturn it and change it on a fundamental level. And I don't know if, I don't think I'm the expert to say we're quite there yet, but I think we're pretty close. I think that what the people want is consistently at odds with what our politicians do. There are certain people that have significantly more power than everyone else. So within a House of Representatives or a Congress, you're not going to have the same level of power for each person in there. So I think those people who have a lot of power are, tend to have the most, um, the most influence by companies and big money. And then their values become tainted and they're not able to listen clearly to the will of the people, which is not their fault. I'm not blaming them. I understand it's challenging to, to balance it all out, but it's not who, it's not who, why we voted people in. And so I think that that's why I want millennials to vote because locally we've had a lot of elections, even in this last cycle where the progressive candidate lost by 20 votes. So to say that voting doesn't matter, um, sometimes it's true in the electoral college and the presidential elec election, it's kind of true. But in local elections, it really does matter. Just a handful of people. There's a yeah. lot of elections here locally where it's just a few dozen votes off. Number five from the series Hawaii Together, hosted by Kali'i Akina. It was called Free Market Economics with Mark Skousen, Hawaii Together, with guest Mark Skousen. As a renowned economics professor, financial analyst, author, and successful investor, Mark Skousen is one of the leading financial minds in the country. In this interview, he discussed what free market economics is all about and why we should promote it. I wonder if you'll tell our viewers what exactly this thing called the free market is. A lot of times people get their views from television or from the movies. I remember that movie a few years ago uh, entitled Wall Street, where the main character, Gordon Gecko was credited with having the philosophy of the free market. His main phrase about, about the free market was, greed is good. How would you describe the free market, Mark? Well, having been in the financial markets uh, for uh, over 40 years, I can tell you that greed is a very dangerous uh, vice. Uh, anybody who's greedy ends up buying at the top. Uh, 
uh, are tempted to get involved in uh, speculations that turn out to be unprofitable. I know I've been greedy before. I've gotten involved in these kinds of deals. And a lot of people are, if you get greedy, you're tempted to get involved with the Bernie Madoff scandal, which promises high returns and little or no risk. Uh, so greed is not a virtue. Uh, selfishness is not a virtue. Um, when we talk about the free market, yes, it, you are free to be greedy. You are free to be selfish. Uh, but you learn very quickly that that doesn't necessarily work out to your advantage. Uh, Adam Smith is the heroic figure of free market economics, and he taught us that a free market is where you have the right to decide what you're going to pay your workers, what you're going to produce, uh, who you hire, who you fire. Um, uh, it, it really gets to, and, and how you're going to share the profits, if you're going to share the profits with your workers and so on. So there's there's always a variety of what is chosen. And government regulation is essential for a uh, thriving economy. I'm not an anarchist and neither was Adam Smith. But you know, um, you, you need to be careful that you don't over-regulate. Uh, where in today's world, too much is prohibited or mandated. So we're being squeezed from both sides uh, uh, when it comes to economic freedom. Staff pick from the series Sister Power, hosted by Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. It was called a conversation with Dr. James McCoy, the National Medical Association's annual convention and scientific assembly, with guest James McCoy. The National Medical Association's annual convention and scientific assembly is acclaimed as the nation's foremost forum on medical science and African American health. Each year, African-American physicians and other health professionals from across the country convene to participate in the scholarly exchange of medical advances and to discuss health policy priorities and to share experiences through networking opportunities. NMA is an awesome organization and you did excellent in explaining uh, what we do. And Thank but this, this is the thing, NMA was founded in eight, 1995. You may want to know, well, okay, there's another organization that is called AMA, American Medical Association. So why would African Americans have to create their own organization? The reason simply, discrimination. Because we weren't allowed to join AMA, that's the white counterpart. So we did put together our own organization. And that discrimination really continued from the AMA all the way up to, um, I would say, the 1960s. But interestingly, um, the first African American physician in 1981 became president of AMA. A black man? A black man. Became president of, of AMA. Around 1991. 1991. Yes, Dr. Bresto from California. Now, wait till I tell you this. In 2008, the president of the American Medical Association came to the NMA convention and apologized for their contribution of racism, discrimination, disparity in health when it comes to uh, African Americans. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. These are only samplings from the top five and staff pick from across our 35 weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more.
To see these top five and staff pick shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have questions or comments about these or any of our shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on ThinkTechHawaii.com and YouTube. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Okay, Keisha, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Keisha does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Keisha King. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.